Hey folks, it's Chris here, and uh, today we're going to deal with extension cords. I've been neglecting my garage, been spending all my time in my shop, and it's time to start cleaning. And my extension cords are laying everywhere, and I've got a good solution for it. And we're going to make a five gallon bucket mobile power station to store all of our extension cords, and it's kind of cool. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make one and then what it can do. This is a quick project and all you're going to need is a five gallon bucket, uh, a power strip, uh, some zip ties, a little hole saw, a little drill bit, uh, the dowel that you see in the picture, that's option, that's an option for you. I usually use a Pringles can and you'll see what it's for. And of course a, a drill. Okay, getting started, the first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole at the bottom of the bucket, and that is for the plug of the power strip to fit through. So you want a hole saw or a drill bit big enough for the end of the plug to stick through the bottom of the bucket there. All right, this is going back to the, uh, the dowel we talked about a second ago. That's optional. Um, Why I'm drilling holes, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole at the bottom of the bucket right in the center and we'll see more about this here in just a second and again this is an optional step but while I'm drilling holes I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now I'm grabbing my power strip and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to mount this thing on this bucket so I'm kind of sizing it up right now and see where I'm going to need to drill holes. Um, I can see right now this is where I'm going to place it so now I'm going to mark some holes. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to uh, easily mark these holes without using a measuring tape. Okay, I know some of you are saying, duh, uh, but what I like to use for templates on things like this instead of a tape measure is wax paper. Um, not holding a camera, it makes it a lot easier, but uh, hold the piece of paper back there, mark whatever holes you need to, or mark, trace, whatever you need, uh, poke some holes in it, Throw it on the surface you need to throw it on, uh, mark the holes, and it uh, comes out pretty precise. Uh, easy to do. Then we'll drill those holes out here, and we'll start fishing our zip ties through. I know not all power strips are as easy as this one I'm using, um, so you'll have to figure out how to mount it on your own, but I always use zip ties and find the power strips I want to, cinch it up, and there we go. We got a mounted power strip on the side of a bucket. Okay, going back to that optional step, I'm just taking a small drill bit and drilling a pilot hole in the middle of this dowel, and then I'm just going to take a wood screw, and at the bottom of the bucket, I'm going to mount this, uh, this dowel right in the center. Again, sometimes I use a Pringles can. I like Pringles cans because you can store things in the Pringles can, like some of your accessories. Um, this just helps keep your cords from tangling, you know, crossing the center. Uh, it's a step I do on all of mine. Now finally, you're just going to take the plug of the power strip, poke it in the bottom hole there, coil it around a little bit. Now you're going to take your extension cords and start plugging them into each other and coil and coil and coil. At first they probably won't sit as nicely as you want them to, uh, but over time they take shape, I guess you should say. Um, I've got 275 feet of cord here, and at the end for you master electricians and YouTube police, I've got a little warning. Um, lastly, and this is not even a step you have to do, I take a Sharpie and mark the thickness of the cord and take a hacksaw and make a little notch so uh, the end of my cord fits in that little notch real nicely and I'm done. Uh, now I've got my extension cords all nicely stored and lastly I'll show you what I do with it. Uh, I'll take it to my power source and uh, it's gonna get dark here and I'll take the end there, plug it in. Hopefully you can see it here. Got it plugged in. <laughs> now I'm going to pick up that bucket and take it to my job site, wherever I'm working. 
And it just uncoils real nicely there. Boom, 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 boom. And now I'm at my job site. Turn on the power strip there and start plugging in a little radio, my battery chargers, uh, whatever I need to. And again, there's going to be a little warning here in a second, uh, but that's all there is to it. And then when you're done, everything coils back up real nicely and your cords are put away. Okay, this warning is for all those experts that seem to come out to the woodwork whenever you uh, make a little small video project like this. Uh, they always want to show their wit in the comment section below. Look, I'm using small gauge extension cords and I've got 275 feet of them plugged into each other. I don't expect to pull out this full length, power my table saw, my miter saw, fan, battery chargers, whatever, all at the same time without throwing a breaker or getting something too hot. No, this is just a practical way to keep your extension cords organized, tangle free, and yes, power a battery charger and a small radio or a small fan. So I know there's still going to be some negative comments. Go ahead and state them below. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Take your best shot. Uh, for those that enjoyed it, I hope you do take something out of it. This really is a cool way to keep your cords organized and put away and just stored away. So, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, until next time. If you haven't seen my videos before, that's because I haven't made one in a couple years and I deleted everything I had before. And if you visit thefoosers.com, you're going to be disappointed at first because I am starting fresh. So please keep checking back and I'm going to have a lot more to share.